There we are. Greetings, one and all, and welcome once again to Tom's Hit Parade, another pre-recorded video coming at you, because it is another chapter in my Hold Darn CD collection. Yes, chapter number seven, lucky number seven uh, today. Uh, I hope you guys have had a good week and are having a good weekend. Uh, this is Juneteenth weekend. Uh, today is the, what, the 19th? No, 18th. Uh, and yes, uh, my employer actually, uh, this is the second year that my employer has uh, uh, officially recognized Juneteenth as, as a paid holiday for us. So, you know, yay the fact that we have an extra day off, uh, you know, a three-day weekend this weekend, but also that uh, they have elevated it to the importance of making it a work holiday for the entire uh, uh, entity that I work for. So that's pretty awesome, I think. We live in a pro fairly progressive state. So uh, it's not totally surprising in that respect. But anyway, uh, happy Juneteenth to you all uh, if you choose to observe it. Uh, but yes, I don't have a whole lot to say other than to just dive into my uh, Chapter 7 of my Hold Darn CD collection. I do have four recent acquisitions uh, that would have appeared in the chapters preceding this if I'd had them before now. So let's go ahead and knock those out of the way really quick. I, I like to do that when I have new acquisitions. Uh, first of all, we have AHA, the classic Norwegian uh, pop band from, from the 80s. F for some reason, I had never had any of their studio albums until now. This is uh, Hunting High and Low, their debut album, which of course has their big hit, Take On Me. Uh, yes, I don't know what took me so long to get, uh, you know, because I'm an 80s guy, what took me so long to get that. But uh, anyway, uh, next up we have, we have one from just about every letter of the alphabet leading up to where we are now. Uh, for the bees, we have Andrea Bocelli. This is Vivere, I guess that's how you pronounce it, the best of. I guess uh, you might recall I had um, Andrea Bocelli Christmas uh, album in my last holiday hit parade, I, I or my one of my last holiday videos. I talked about that album. I, I think I got it, it was either on the, oh no, it was from uh, my friend Sue. She gave me a big bunch of uh, holiday CDs last year, and that was one of them. And I really enjoyed it, and so I picked up another album of his recently. I think it was called C, because it has like Ed Sheeran and a couple of other uh, pop artists uh, guest starring on it. And I rather like that one, so uh, this one was actually in the $1 section at House of Records. So I figured, what the heck, I uh, kind of like it. Uh, not a, a big enough Andrea Bocelli fan to really go after his CDs at full price, uh, but hey, when I find one in the $1 or $2 section, I might pick it up. Well, well, maybe not going forward now that I have the best of and one since then, but who knows? If the mood strikes me, what the heck. And then this one I was actually rather happy to receive. I'm not a huge fan of the band, uh, hence you uh, might not have been puzzled because you didn't see any of this artist's albums in, this would have been my last chapter, I think. And by the way, if you're watching these and you see me not mention something that you think I should have, say something in the comments. Let me know. Uh, maybe there's something great that I'm missing out on that you think I would like. But anyway, this one in particular would be Def Leppard. This is the deluxe edition of their Pyromania album. Uh, I am not a huge 80s metal or, or metal in general or hair metal fan, so I'm not big into these guys. I've got uh, one Van Halen album and their uh, two disc greatest hits collection and I think that's about it, but uh, other than uh, Def Leppard, a, a classic album from the 80s. Uh, most of you know Pyromania. It's got uh, a Photograph and Foolin, two of their big, big hits, but it's, it is just packed with another a uh, whole bunch of other good songs. Rock of Ages, uh, this, uh, in a way, I guess it's kind of become one of their signature songs. But uh, yeah, good stuff. And this actually, uh, the second disc in this set is a live album from the LA Forum in 1983. So. I actually uh, was looking for, you know, I almost picked up just the regular edition of it, and I went to Epic Seconds, and they had the deluxe version, so woohoo. And it cost just as much as I would have paid for the standard version new. Uh, this one was used, I got it for 12 bucks, a little pricey, but it was in excellent condition, so picked it up. And then in the E's, we have a new edition. I actually talked about how I was going to pick this one up, uh, or I was thinking about picking it up, but I hadn't yet. And since that last video, I was compelled to pick up Echo Smith's most recent album, Lonely Generation. Uh, very good. I don't know if it's quite as good as their debut album, but uh, yeah. 
it's, they've still got it, I guess you'd say. So uh, yeah, that, that catches us up with new acquisitions. As I, ta as I take a sip of refreshing water, I'm clever with the quips today, aren't I? Anyway, uh, picking up with the the actual CD collection proper, uh, you might recall in the last chapter I left off with an Enya album. Here's another one, Watermark, uh, added to the Enya collection, and these are actually the only two, or did I mention, or is this the third one that I have? I actually, it's slipping my mind right now, but anyway, these are the only Enya albums that I have. Not a huge fan of her, but I had to have the albums that have the big hits. Uh, this one had um, Orinoco Flow, yes, Orinoco Flow, great, great song, and uh, yeah, good stuff. And then we have this chapter, I actually meant to mention this at the beginning, but actually this chapter of my CD collection might be the one that has where I have the most multi-disc discographies, not necessarily full discographies, but uh, you know, like four or more albums by uh, each artist, so this might be the biggest uh, consecutive collection of that. So you're going to see quite a few uh, uh, artists with multiple albums in here. So anyway, the first one is Gloria Estefan, uh, although this album is actually billed just to Miami Sound Machine, but I have it with my Gloria Estefan CDs. This is Primitive Love, rather enjoy that one. And then we have Let It Loose, uh, the, the next English language album in her discography. And we have uh, Cuts Both Ways, got some great songs on it. Uh, I guess I ought to talk about which songs are my favorite on some of these. Uh, let's see, The Words Get in the Way and Conga are on Primitive Love. And Gloria Estefan is one of those artists whose voice, uh, female artists whose voice I love the most. I'm not huge on female artists or female vocalists, but there are some that are just fantastic. The voices are just amazing. And Gloria Estefan is one of those. And then we have, um, on uh, Let It Loose, we have Rhythm Is Gonna Get You and One, Two, Three. Those are really good good hits. And then on uh, Cuts Both Ways, we have, of course, the, the title track, as well as uh, Get On Your Feet and Don't Wanna, Don't Wanna Lose You. That's a good one as well. And I thought there was another one on here. Oh, actually, I think it's on the next album. This is... Oh, I actually have five of hers. I thought I only had four. And they don't want to stay upright. They want to fall over. We have Into the Light, another excellent one. Uh, this one has Can't Forget You. That is a great, great song, and I had completely forgotten about it. I had the two-disc Essential Gloria Estefan for quite a while and not until I decided to get rid of it and pick up her solo albums. And Can't Forget You was not on the Essential. And that was just, you know after I finally remembered that song by listening to this album, I'm thinking, how could they have left that off? That was just criminal. Anyway, then we have Hold Me, Thrill Me, Kiss Me. This is, I think it's mostly a covers collection, if I remember correctly. Yes, Everlasting Love, Don't Let the Sun Catch You Crying. That's a great uh, classic song. You've Made Me So Very Happy. That was a Blood, Sweat, and Tears song, if I remember correctly. Breaking Up is Hard to Do. I think that was the Everly Brothers. So... A good, good album. And that is the extent of my Gloria Estefan. Then we move on to Melissa Etheridge. I have the first, what is it, four of her albums, her self titled, with uh, uh, similar features is a good song, and Chrome Plated Heart. I like that one. Oh, and uh, Like the Way I Do. And I had a uh, friend, this is a kind of a, a story, well, Actually, I could save that for another time. Let me see how long it takes me to get through this uh, thing. I might save story time for later. I can always do st story time in other videos. Uh, the her, uh, her sophomore album, Brave and Crazy, by Melissa Etheridge. Um, let's see. My Back Door is one of the uh, good songs on here. Oh, No Souvenirs. I think that was another good one. It's funny, I don't recognize very many of the songs by their titles on that one. And then her third album, Never Enough, a very good one as well. And, hmm, that is just funny. I am just not recognizes, recognizing the song titles. 
you know, one of the reasons I'm doing this is so that I can look at CDs and see, hmm, do I really, am I really still attached to this one? Do I really want to keep it? So this disc, you know, this CD collection video could become obsolete as soon as it posts to YouTube. Anyway, uh, yes, I am. This is one of her most successful albums. This is definitely one I'm keeping. Uh, I'm the only one. And uh, Come to My Window are, of course, ex uh, absolute classics of hers. So, uh, yeah. I guess I, I, for some reason, I'm not feeling as attached to Melissa Etheridge as I had been previously. I wonder, that that's very curious. You're witnessing a live... Hmm, am I changing my mind on this artist or not thing for me? Kind of funny, huh? Anyway, on to the next artist in my collection, Eurythmics. This art, this group is definitely, I'm, uh, I am keeping these albums. I've got a, a block of their, four of their albums in uh, from their discography. Uh, this is Sweet Dreams Are Made Of This. Uh, the title track, of course, is classic and... Uh, Love is a Stranger is another really good song. And uh, very good songs on here. And then their follow up album, Touch, is excellent. Uh, here, come, here Comes the Rain Again, Who's That Girl? And uh, Right By Your Side is another really good song. And then we have Be Yourself Tonight, their follow up album from that. Uh, there Must Be an Angel Playing my, With My Heart, a great song. Sisters Are Doing It For Themselves, I love that song. And uh, yeah. and then the last one of theirs that I own is Revenge. And uh, this one has Missionary Man, a great, great hit from them. And moving on to, this is one of the few uh, onesies that I have. And, and it's a compilation, a hits collection, Everclear. Uh, their uh, their installment in the Icon series. Uh, never been a, a big enough fan of theirs to have their studio albums. I used to have a few of them, but just wasn't attached to them, and this disc has all the hits that I wanted off of it, so uh, Santa Monica... Uh, Santa Monica? Am I British or uh, Northeastern all of a sudden? Uh, AM Radio is one of my favorite Everclear songs, probably my favorite one. Uh, wonderful and when it all goes wrong again, the, they have a cover of Brown Eyed Girl by Van Morrison on here. Good stuff. Then we come to one of my favorite artists, uh, favorite classic artists, the Everly Brothers. Uh, this is Songs Our Daddy Taught Us. This is one of their classic albums. Uh, this was, I bought in a, was a $2 or $3 per disc sale that Varez Saraband had uh, on their website for their pop and uh, country and uh, classics uh, imprint for as vintage uh, this was one of them uh, great song and I do not have uh, Billy Joe Armstrong and was it Nora Jones I think uh, did an album covering the songs on this album uh, they called it foreverly I don't have that one yet but now I having finally listened to this album I need to pick that one up and then we have uh, the Everly Brothers uh, entry into the definitive collection series, two discs with uh, 30 songs of their greatest hits on there. <clears throat> Excuse me, my throat's drying up. Excuse me. We have uh, Here's another onesie that I have. Uh, Get to Heaven, the album by uh, British rock group Everything Everything. Good stuff. I can't remember how I discovered these guys, but I found this album, listened to it, and rather enjoyed it. Uh, let's see, the song, oh, what is the song? Regret. That's my favorite song on this album. That's an excellent album song. And coming up on the next entry in the World Idol, my World Idol collection, I guess you'd say, and this guy is from Belgium. He was a winner of a Belgian Idol contest, Peter Everard. Uh, this is his debut album, Rhubarb. Interesting title for an album. And yeah, good stuff. He does a bit of a... Uh, a bit of a post-grunge hard rock sound, as you can kind of tell from his uh, from his look there. Kind of has the Bo Bice thing going on, although I think this was a couple of years be yeah, this was a few years before Bo Bice. Bo Bice-esque, I guess you'd say. Uh, and then we have an, an, art an artist who just recently just released his new album, and you will see it in a second, George Ezra. This is his debut, Wanted on Voyage. And 
I love George Ezra because of his uh, unique, distinctive voice. He has kind of a deep voice, and I just really enjoy listening to it. Uh, his sophomore album, Staying at Tomorrow's, and his hot off the presses, fresh, brand new album, Gold Rush Kid. Uh, although this one, sad to say, is not as good as... Uh, it was a little bit disappointing. It's not a bad album. It's just uh, maybe I, it still needs to grow on me, I think. But uh, hmm, it was not bad. I'm not sorry I bought it. Let's just put it that way. Now, this next artist, um, he is one that very few of you, if any of you, have heard of. And I had a... Uh, I think this was back when I had my written music blog out on the Internet... I connected with a few different music fans, and one of them uh, was a fan of this artist that I had never heard of, and she, she sent me a mix CD at some point, and it had a handful of his songs on it, uh, well, just a couple of his songs on it. And then I went on the internet, onto YouTube and whatnot, and every song of his that I listened to, I liked more than the last one. And so I eventually somehow was able to track down all three of his albums up to that point. And this was before... I think before Discogs, at least before Discogs had its retail uh, marketplace. So it was pretty hard. If it wasn't on eBay or you couldn't get it on Amazon, uh, albums from, uh, in this case, Norway, were very hard to come by. So I've had uh, a couple of times over the years, uh, haven't had to for many years, thankfully, had a friend of a friend buy an album and I would PayPal him the money. And he was very nice to have tracked down the album for me, to have ordered it from web stores that would not ship to the United States. So, yes, you people in the Discogs age, those of you who don't remember remember the post the pre-Discogs age, don't know how good you have it. Let me, let me put it that way. But anyway, uh, after that long drawn out story, we have Eric Faber. He is a pop artist, a pop singer songwriter, uh, excellent, wonderful, kind of moody, uh, mostly synth based, although he does have some organic, as I like to call it, instrumentation. Uh, pretty much pop, but with a little bit of, uh, you know, singer-songwriter stuff uh, in with it. Let's see, and this one, this album, his debut album, Between the Lines, is poppier than his other ones. Um, let's see, On Top of the World is a really good one, and uh, Not Afraid is another really good song on here. Don't Give Up, Don't Give Up If You Gotta Give In is a really good song. And his sophomore album, Century. And this one might be, I think the title track was a very, very minor single. I think it got some exposure here in the States, or at least in North America. But uh, it's like if there's one song that you might know of Eric Faber's, it would be Century. But probably very few of you do or have heard of it. But yeah, that was a really, really, really good song. And uh, Strange and Open Your Eyes are another couple of really good songs like this one. And then his uh, third studio album, and the most recent one, and it's from 2006. I think he has moved into the more into the songwriting and production thing. I don't think he's... I think he's just kind of retired from being a recording artist. But uh, this album, Passages, is... Uh, this one might be his best. It has a fantastic duet on it called Racing. That is, that is probably my favorite Eric Faber song. As well as uh, Not Over. That's another really good one, song, good one on here. But uh, yeah, Racing by Eric Faber. Check that song out. It's fantastic. And then we have an artist that uh, most of you have, I'm sure, heard of. Fall Out Boy. Uh, this is their... This is I don't think this is their debut album, but I think it's their sophomore album from Under the Cork Tree, but this was their breakthrough album. And uh, their song titles are just about as entertaining as anything else. But yes, of course, Sugar We're Going Down is on here. It's a big hit. And this one I got from a good friend of mine for Christmas a few years ago. Thank you to that good friend. You know who you are. And then uh, I picked up at House of Records a few months ago their, so their follow-up album, Infinity on High. Pretty good stuff. I, I'm i not in love with their music enough to have pursued them further, at least thus far. But uh, they're entertaining. And then we have another American Idol this time, Fantasia, with her debut album, Free Yourself. And then I found... Uh, about a year ago, I think it was, at a thrift store. Her follow-up, a self-titled. Good stuff. Uh, an excellent R&B diva. And then we have uh, another... Well, she's not really an R&B diva. She's more of a singer-songwriter... Singer-songwriter R&B. 
uh, Dion Ferris. I've talked about her. I think I spotlight, spotlit her in a bargain bag video when I used to do the spotlight albums. Uh, Wild Seed Wildflower is the uh, name of this album. And the song I Know was her big hit. Excellent song. And is this one piggybacked with... Oh, no, I guess it's not. So at one point, I had the I Know single. And I thought it was piggybacked on this, but I guess I don't have that single anymore. Got rid of it, probably because I got the album. So, which would stand to reason, wouldn't it? And then we move on to a uh, alt-rock band from the late 90s. Fastball. Uh, this is their... This is not their debut album. I think this is their sophomore album, All the Pain Money Can Buy. This had some uh, big hits. The Way was their big, big hit. And then uh, sooner or later, I think, was a, a, a lesser hit of theirs. And uh, Out of My Head was another really great song of theirs. A very, very good band, if you have not listened to them. And I've got their follow-up album, uh, The Harsh Light of Day. This one is excellent. One of my favorite songs by any artist is You're an Ocean. And that is on this album. It is great. You're an Ocean, as in You Are an Ocean. Uh, it's a great one. And there are a couple other good songs on here, I think. Funny How It Fades Away is another really good one. Yes, and I love You're an Ocean so much that I also have the CD single of it. <laughs> and yes, I would have piggybacked the single onto the this album, but as you can see, this is in a digipack, so I couldn't piggyback. But yes, this, uh, this has a couple of live tracks on it, uh, Out of My Head and The Way from their debut album, or their previous album, and a couple of, I believe, non-album tracks, Androgynous and Like Wow, Wipeout. That might be a cover of the, the Surfari song, Wipeout, I'm not sure. But anyway, uh, on to the next artist, who, uh, by whom I have a few albums, Fatboy Slim. I've, been, I've found most of these, if not all of these, in like the budget bin at various stores. Uh, Better Living Through Chemistry. And then we have You've Come a Long Way, Baby. And this one has, uh, you know, right here, right now, the Rockefeller Skank. And what is, there was another one, I thought. Oh, Praise You is another one of their big hits. Pretty much all of the big hits came from this album. And so that's why I've been deliberating. Uh, do I want to keep the other two? Maybe I... I'm kind of leaning toward getting rid of the, rid of the other two, but I'm going to give them another listen. But yes, Halfway Between the Gutter and the Stars is the follow-up, and I have that one as well. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of leaning toward just keeping You've Come a Long Way, Baby. Uh, but uh, that remains to be seen. We'll see what happens on, on upon a re-listen. Now, this next one. I used to have this artist's sophomore album, but... It just didn't strike me as, as a keeper, and so I got rid of it a long time ago, but I've been thinking about uh, reacquiring it. But Newton Faulkner, he is a British, I believe, uh, singer-songwriter, and he has a lot of electronic elements, well, some electronic elements in his sound, so that kind of makes him stand out, makes him different uh, from the average singer-songwriter. Uh, Hand Built by Robots is the his uh, debut album, and uh, Dream Catch Me is a fantastic song. I love that one. And uh, People Should Smile More. I kind of like that one. But, uh, yes. And, and one of the most awesome album covers ever. Uh, the You might see the Confederate flag on there. So that notwithstanding, I, ju I just love the imagery on that album cover. I actually have, I think I still have it, one of those big four foot by four foot um, promotional album covers that record stores sometimes have for display. Uh, I bought one of those from Skips. You know, he would rotate out the old ones and sell them uh, over the years, and uh, that was one of them that I bought, and I just don't have the wall space to put it on my walls. But it's it's over here in the corner, I think, uh, behind, behind the Michael Jackson promo thing that I have. Now, uh, water break first. Now we're coming to another artist who just released their most recent album. And it, this actually is an artist that I fell off of for a while, but when I heard that their new album was coming out uh, last month, went and listened to the singles, and I decided, okay, I need to catch, catch up with these guys. This is a British pop rock band called The Feeling, and uh, this is their, uh, I think I might have those lights a little bright, uh, this is their debut album, 12 Stops and Home, this is fantastic. Uh, this was released in the States, but with a different, and in my opinion, far less wonderful cover 
that's far less imaginative cover in the states but uh, yeah if you like super tramp you'll like these guys they've got that same kind of a um, jangly pop uh, sort of a sound uh, reminiscent of super tramp um, never be lonely fill my little world is a great song that was one of their big um, big singles uh, sewn is another one sewn as in with a needle and thread and I Love It When You Call is another fantastic song. But I, I could name pretty much the entire track list. And this album was so wonderful that is it got me into, uh, really got me hooked on the band. So much so that I picked up their sophomore album, Join With Us, which I used to have in a single disc jewel case edition. But this was, oh no, it was their, uh, their next album, Together We Are Made, their third album that I found this one at an Everyday Music. I used to have these, this one disc edition, but I found this double disc uh, uh, square bound, I guess you'd say, edition at Everyday Music up in Portland. So I bought it and having, <clears throat> having that deluxe edition made me track down this one on eBay. But uh, let's see, I Thought It Was Over is a really good song on here. And uh, let's see, Won't Go Away is another, another really bouncy one. And uh, Loneliness is a good song on here. And as for Together We Were Made, uh, another uh, Set My World on Fire, wonderful song. Dance for the Lights, uh, Leave Me Out of It is a really, really good ballad. And A Hundred Sinners, Come and Get It is possibly my favorite song by The Feeling. Uh, that one's just, it's really kooky and the lyrics don't make much sense. Um, and they're not really very substantial. But so it's just the, the whole something about the song that's very fun to listen to. A uh, hundred sinners come and get it. But yes, this one has uh, disc one is the birds, which is which is the standard studio album, and disc two is the bees, as in the B sides. Very clever. And what did they they name both of these tracks? Um, oh, disc one is new friends, and disc two is old friends. Uh, old friends is. Uh, alternate versions, acoustic versions, um, or remixes of other songs, but they also have a couple of other non-album B-sides on that one. So, anyway, and so those three albums were the only ones that I had had by the band up until just recently. Uh, I liked this, what I'd heard of their most recent album enough that I went online to eBay, I think it was eBay, yeah, and they had uh, a seller just happened to be selling their second, third, fourth, and fifth albums all in one lot. They were all still sealed, and they only wanted ten bucks for them. So yes, I bought them, and yes, I have their second and third albums already. But uh, my friend Noah is getting the benefit of the redundancy of that part of the lot. So, uh, but yes, uh, now I have and I've listened to their fourth album, Boy Cried Wolf. Uh, I actually did buy this one back when it was originally released and for some reason I didn't didn't think much of it I didn't care for it at the time but have come to appreciate it uh, my music tastes have grown and uh, rounded out a bit more I guess you'd say since I had last heard this album so uh, I appreciate appreciate it more now and their self-titled fifth or fifth album the feeling is another really good one and uh, I've only listened to both of these a few times, so I can't pick out any favorite tracks in there. But here is the one that uh, got me back on the Feeling Bandwagon, their most recent album, uh, Spankin' New Release, Loss, Hope, Love. Fantastic album. Uh, it kind of brings them back to form. And um, Lost is probably my favorite song. On, oh, no, uh, there's a word for it. That's the name of the song. That's It's really good. Uh, and from the lyrics of that song, that ki that song kind of serves as the title track, uh, and that's one reason probably why I love that song so much. But uh, there is no music, and you know me and my penchant for songs about music. Uh, that one's another highlight. But yes, that song and there's a word for it. Go check those songs out. Fantastic album by a fantastic band, The Feeling. Then moving on, we have another onesie only because I think this is the only album he's ever put out. Uh, a guy by the name of Faras. He is a um, Middle Eastern uh, by, uh, what do you call it? Uh, not upbringing, but uh, you know, his, his parentage, his, his heritage is Middle Eastern heritage. That's what I'm trying to say. 
Uh, and some of you might rec recognize the song uh, Hollywood's Not America. It was used during American Idol during one season as the, the exit song for artists that, uh, or um, contestants that were eliminated. But that for me is the least interesting song on this album. This is just a fantastic, great album. Aliens and, Rainbow, Aliens and Rainbows, which is the title track, and uh, Something About You is my favorite song on this album. I love that one. It's just a really energetic, synth-poppy, 80s sounding thing. I love that one. Uh, Everybody Bleeds the Same is another really good song. Uh, Dear God. I love the lyrics in Dear God. That is... That kind of sums up my view on the whole God and religion thing. So listen to Dear God by Faraz. Now this next one, uh, this is uh, the Essential Fifth Dimension, uh, the classic pop soul psychedelic pop band from the 60s. And an interesting thing, uh, not only do I like a lot of this, this band's songs from what I've heard, uh, but I found out after I bought this that this was a favorite band of my father's. And, and I found this out years after he passed away. Uh, and this was that came as a complete revelation and a shock to me because I only ever heard him listening to classical music. So, but lo and behold, he loved the fifth dimension. So, I guess that kind of, there's a reason why I enjoyed it was because I guess there was a little bit of that seed that I didn't even know about that, uh, yeah. hereditary music tastes, maybe? If that's a thing, I don't know. Uh, and then we have, this video is going to be a bit longer than the other ones because I'm giving you all sorts of stories. So I'm going to try and speed up the second half. Yes, we've only gotten through half of my of this block of CDs first, uh, so far. Uh, Filter. This is uh, their album. I think this is like their third album, The Amalgamate. Uh, I think that's how you pronounce it. But uh, I heard the song... Oh, shoot, where is that? Oh, Where Do We Go From Here? I think I heard it on a compilation and really, really enjoyed it. It's a bit more industrial and a, bit, and a bit more metal than I care, than I usually like my music, but I like the song, the, type, the sound of that song. And also, The Only Way is the Wrong Way, that's a bit more of a uh, subdued song. But yes, those two are the, the reasons I hang on to this CD. Where Do We Go From Here and The Only Way is the Wrong Way. <clears throat> Good stuff. Uh, the lyrical content is kind of dark in a lot of places, but uh, yeah. Just one of those exceptions to the types of music that I usually like. So, and then we move on to another, is it 80s? Yes, 1988. Another 80s favorite of mine, Fine Young Cannibals, The Raw and the Cook. This is their debut album. This has She Drives Me Crazy and Good Thing on it, as well as, was there a third uh, hit single on her? Maybe not. But uh, yeah, good artist. And I don't have their sophomore album, and I think they only put out two albums. Um, just because I don't like those songs as much, as much as I like the ones on that album. And then we have a more recent album here from last year, uh, Phineas, his uh, debut album, self-titled, I guess. Oh, Optimist, that's the name of it. The font size of that song title is so small, I don't know if I can even, if it'll even focus so that you can read it, but... <coughs> They have to remember those of us whose eyesight is very, very slowly diminishing, or ain't what it used to be anyway. Print stuff bigger, people, come on. Then we have Fits and the Tantrums. Um, this is their album, Picking Up the Pieces. And I think this, if memory serves, I bought this one at Forever Young Records in Dallas, Texas, when uh, my, my, my man Noah was by my side. Another excellent um, a, uh, memento of that trip. And then we have their follow-up album, More Than Just a Dream. This one, this is my favorite of their albums. And I don't know what possessed them to go in the direction that they went in after this album. Just uh, kind of reminds me a little bit of the direction that Jason Mraz went in. He just, he, he had me for those first few albums and then completely lost me. So, what can you do? You can't tell artists what, what to record. They have to record what what moves them to record, and you just have to decide whether you like it or not. Then we move on to a classic vocalist, one of my favorite classic uh, pop and um, singer-songwriter, well, 
one of my favorite classic pop vocalists of all time, Ella Fitzgerald. And this is volume one and volume two of the Cole Porter songbook. I found these two in on the freebie shelf, believe it or not. So, um, and the shelf, speaking of shelves, the shelf that this is on is, uh, it's may not, it may not be stable. So hopefully uh, things will be okay through the rest of this video. Anyway, yes, uh, Cole Porter, a fantastic songwriter, and Ella Fitzgerald, a fantastic vocalist. You cannot help but get a fantastic set of albums um, as a result. And uh, yes, I guess we should have a drinking game for the amount of times I say the word fantastic. Maybe you shouldn't. You could get alcohol poisoning. Anyway, but uh, yes, um, yeah, Ella, what can you say about her voice? She's just fantastic. And I do also have uh, one of the budget uh, best ofs, her uh, Millennium Collection 20th Century Masters. Uh, this one only has 12 songs on it, but they're all fantastic classics. And that's one thing I've kind of been looking at when I go to the record stores lately is, and, and maybe some of you guys out there know, is there a really, really great quintessential, the best that you can find Ella Fitzgerald compilation? There are, I'm, there, there are dozens, possibly hundreds of them out there. It's just they all have different songs, and so I just, I guess I just need to shop around and see what's out there and decide for myself what to pick up but uh yeah it's like you hear ella fitzgerald and you just want more you know wonderful vocalist and then we have one of my favorite uh boy bands of all time it's moving from classic stuff to uh more recent stuff this is uh, late 90s this is a group called five and uh had five members hence the name and probably my favorite boy band and it's kind of ironic because this boy band had hip-hop in it and, and rap in it, which I've never been a particular fan of. So yes, uh, very weird that they happen to be my favorite boy band, but they're also a boy band that has rap in it. But go figure. Um, when the Lights Go Out, uh, Got the Feelin', let's see, what are some of the other songs on here? Uh, it's All Over, Oh, Human, which is, I believe, a cover of the Human League song, Human. But yes, this is their, their debut or self-titled debut album, and this is the Australian edition, which has a whopping 18 tracks on it. And then we have their sophomore album, Invincible, which is also in a special edition. Uh, it's got a, a five-disc live EP, which was recorded at the Manchester Evening News Arena. And this one also has a few uh, bonus tracks on the main disc. But uh, uh, Keep On Moving is a good song, and Don't Want to Let You Go. Uh, and one great thing about Five is that they did some of the best covers uh, of any other of any songs that I've heard. Um, <laughs> one of our cats is crying at the door. And I'm trying to ignore him. It's because there's nobody in the house right now, and he gets lonely. I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's uh, he's just he's a code, he's a codependent cat. Okay, uh, it's, it's he's he's not he's not suffering. He's just codependent. Okay, so I'm going to try and keep moving here. That, that's why I'm kind of stumbling over my words as I'm trying to ignore him. Anyway, um, what was I saying? Yes, five does great cover versions and uh, interpolations of other songs into their own songs. One of the best covers of any song that I've ever heard is their cover of Queen's We Will Rock You, which is on this album. And they have uh, Brian May of Queen doing a guitar solo as a guest on there. So, you know, it, it's, it's got, you know, official endorsement by a member of Queen. So uh, it's this great, uh, fantastic song. And then... Um, yeah, a few other good songs on here, but uh, yeah, We Will Rock You, their version is just fantastic. Uh, Two Sides to Every Story, that is another good one. It's actually been a while since I've listened to any of five al Five's albums, so I need to do that. And then their third and unfortunately final album <clears throat> was called King Size, and it's fantastic. And this one is another special, special edition. It's the Japanese version, but I actually don't have the Obi strip, I don't know why. But, uh, and one of the, um, uh, I was talking a minute ago about uh, how they interpolate other songs into their own songs. Um, oh, 
Rock the Party is uh, they actually take the melody of Grease, the song by Frankie Valli, which was the title track from the movie Grease, and it, you know, they use that as the basis for the song Rock the Party. And again, it was just an ingenious interpolation of a classic song into a new song. And then uh, Lent, Let's Dance, and uh, Closer to Me is a great, great ballad. I love that one. And Hear Me Now is one of my favorite songs by anyone, and it's my favorite five song. So, uh, and Feel, Feel the Love is one of those nice, um, positive, uplifting, anthemic songs. That's really good. So, uh, yes, Five is a great boy band. They are sadly uh, no more. They only did those three albums, but and I still miss them. I wish they did a fourth, but darn it. And then we move on to another Five, Five for Fighting. Uh, this is their, I believe this is their sophomore album. It might be their debut album, America Town. Uh, the one that I think they're most famous for, uh, Easy Tonight and Superman, It's Not Easy. I guess they, 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 have, they didn't decide whether it was easy or not uh, when they made this album. And uh, yeah, my sister was a big fan of Five for Fighting. She really enjoyed his stuff. And I think at least one of, the, one of these CDs is from her collection, I believe. And uh, their follow-up album, The Battle for Everything, it's really good as well. Uh, 100 Years is a really great song. And uh, Disneyland is another really good one. And then their next album, which was called Two Lights. That's a really, really good one. Um, California Justice is a good song. And what was the other one? I thought there was another one on here that I really enjoyed. Can't think of what it was right now. But uh, And the last of their albums that I own presently is Slice. And uh, the title track is great. And... Um, Gosh, I'm, I'm blanking on which songs are really good because I can't remember them from their titles. The problem with having such a big CD collection is it's been a long time since I've listened to all... You know, if you have this many CDs, you don't get around to re-listening to them very often. Which which is one reason why I've, I'm have i almost perpetually in a CD pruning mood, a collection pruning mood. That I you know get rid of CDs I don't listen to anymore. Well, yeah. Let's not go down that rabbit hole. That's... Uh, a whole nother discussion. And now here we have another another onesie, the only album of hers that I have right now, Roberta Flack with her album Set the Night to Music, one of her most popular albums from the 80s, uh, 1991 actually, pardon me. Uh, it has the title track on there, uh, Do It with Maxi Priest, and there is also um, You Make Me Feel Brand New is another really good one. And she, she has a couple of uh, uh, Great American Songbook standards in here. Summertime and My Foolish Heart and uh, Unforgettable, the Nat King Cole song. So, yeah. uh, One of the standout albums in Roberta Flack's catalog. Makes me want to check out more of her stuff, which I unfortunately haven't gotten around to yet. And then we have a, an, an Oklahoma band that I guess I didn't realize I keep forgetting that they're an Oklahoma band, and so uh, Noah has, help, has helped me get into these guys, and uh, I kind of like their stuff. They're a little bit far out, which is why I only have two of their albums thus far, The Flaming Lips, I have The Soft Bulletin, and Yoshimi Battles the Pink Robots. Uh, I actually just picked this one up a few uh, weeks ago. And uh, yeah, interesting stuff. Uh, those two are, for those of you who might be curious about The Flaming Lips, I think those two feel like to me probably their most accessible albums and they are the ones that Noah recommended me getting into first uh, you know aside from their other more far out things and uh, yeah I may be exploring them further uh, coming fairly soon and then here we have a uh, a side effect if you will of my appreciation for the band The Killers I have Brandon Flowers um, his first solo album Flamingo in the deluxe edition which I found, I think, for was it was it in the two fifty section or the four dollars section, uh, the deluxe edition of Flamingo, and then his follow up, the Desired Effect, good stuff. Uh, not a huge huge Killers fan, but I was curious enough. I liked them enough to uh, check out Brandon Flowers solo stuff, and then we're getting into another uh, complete so far discography, uh, the Foo Fighters. With uh, here we have their debut album. And their sophomore album, The Color and the Shape. A little 
thing wants to come out. Of course, now that I want it to come out, it's not. But uh, yeah, small little promotional things. In fact, I don't know why I'm keeping that. It's just kind of in the way. And then we have There is Nothing Left to Lose, followed by One by One. Then we have In Your Honor. As you can tell, I don't have the names of their albums memorized yet. And then I have, I think this one actually Noah sent me, uh, their live album, Skin and Bones. And then Echo, Silence, Patience, and Grace. Wasting Light. And lest you think that I... Uh, oh, Sonic Highways. And coming up, coming up on the end of these, we have Concrete and Gold, and their most recent album, Medicine and Midnight. And lest you think this collection was years in the making, um, I actually bought all of their albums except for their recent one, Medicine Mid at Midnight, and the live album Skin and Bones, in one eBay lot, just because I had heard the song Shame Shame on the radio, really enjoyed it, and so I picked up the album, and that made me start looking for their discography and lo and behold one ebay seller was selling their complete discography and actually had um second copies of a couple of their albums in there so it was you know their full discography plus a couple of redundancies and so i decided to jump on it bought you know bought a lot off of ebay i mean i think i had to pay 60 bucks or something but for that many cds and they were all in excellent condition it was a no-brainer and uh, it ended up being worth the purchase. So, yeah. and I was looking, and this uh, the Skin and Bones CD has something piggybacked on it. What, what does it have? Oh, I think it's a. Uh, oh yeah, a single from uh, of, uh, Best of You. That's right. Yeah, he had in that lot a couple of CD singles as well, and so the CD single for Best of You, I piggyback piggybacked onto this one because. The uh, album that it goes from, In Your Honor, is already a two-disc, so there wasn't room to piggyback it. So yes, there's there's a madness to buy method. And let's come on into the home stretch. Hopefully I will keep this video under an hour. I, th I think I will. Uh, this one is a c another CD from Noah. It is... Trying to read the title here. The Format. Uh, this is a band I believe is an offshoot of, or a predecessor band to Fun. Uh, this is their album Interventions and Lullabies. So thank you, Noah. Not into this as much as I am into Fun and, of course, Bleachers. But uh, it's it's a keepsake. It's a symbol of my friendship with Noah. So definitely keep it, keeping it. As are several of the CDs in my collection, uh, symbolic of my friendship with Noah. And then we have Foster the People one of my favorite, uh, well, not one of my favorite, but it's a band that I like enough to have collected their entire discography thus far. And in fact, this one, as you can see, is a two-disc tour edition, which I found at, at um, Everyday Music up in Portland several years ago. I decided to pick it up. This has a bunch of their B-sides that uh, uh, they released as singles or promotional or, di or uh, streaming only things. And then I have their sophomore album, Supermodel, and this, I believe, is, yep, it's the Japanese version, with a one bonus track, Cassius Clay's Pearly Whites. Uh, but yeah, this one I didn't like as much as um, Torches, their debut album, but uh, Are You What You Want to Be is a favorite song of mine. Sorry, I'm hearing something and I'm not sure what I'm hearing. But the house is still standing, so I guess it's, it's nothing nothing to worry about. And then uh, the third album by Foster the People, uh, Sacred Hearts Club. And this one is not a, no, it's not a Japanese version. But, uh, yeah, they, they're, Foster the People is an, an artist who's, I've liked their albums in kind of descending order as they come out. But still, I'm kind of sad that they have not come out with another album since uh, Sacred Hearts Club, so, which has been five years ago. Maybe we'll see another album from them. Who knows? And then we're coming up on Fountains of Wayne. I have uh, three of their albums. 
uh, Utopia Parkway. This is, I believe, their sophomore album. I had their debut album and was just not fond of it for whatever reason, uh, so I got rid of it. But uh, yeah, we have The Valley of Malls is one of my favorite um, songs on here, and Amity Gardens is another really good one. And then we have Welcome Interstate Managers. Uh, this is, of course, the big their breakthrough hit album that has Stacy's Mom on it, but uh, it has a, several other good songs on here as well. Uh, hey Julie, I like that one. It's kind of a, a country-ish sort of a ditty. And ditty. Yes, <laughs> I, I. What am I, an old guy? I don't know. And uh, Super Collider is a good one. And uh, gosh, what are some of the other ones? Bright Future in Sales, that's a good one. Yes, a good album. And Although this one I think I might like actually a little bit more than Welcome Interstate Managers, and this was their follow-up, Traffic and Weather. I, I really like this one. Someone to Love is a good song. Uh, 92 Subaru is the second uh, track two on there. I really enjoy that one. Uh, the title track, Traffic and Weather, is really good. Uh, this Better Be Good. And uh, so, yeah. Good stuff. I don't know what I'm hearing. I'm hearing noises. But I want to push through this video. I'm almost done. So Sorry about all the distractions. This That's just been kind of weird. Uh, here we have 4 p.m. Uh, for positive, positive Music. And uh, Now is the Time is the name of this album. And they do a cover. The reason I got this album was they do a cover of a 60s song that was originally in Japanese called Sukiyaki, uh, which is a really good song. And their English language version of it is just as good as the original Japanese version. And then, uh, oh, there's another song. That, uh, oh, Time Clock of the Heart. It's a cover of the Culture Club song, uh, which I, I didn't realize was on here until I was listening to the album. So yes, good stuff. Uh, just uh, R&B with, with a little bit of a trace of gospel in it. And also, you know, it's, it's just it's positive music, kind of like uh, what their name 4PM stands for. So uh, nice uplifting stuff. It's good to have uplifting music. And then we have the definitive collection of the Four Tops, classic Motown. Cannot get enough of Motown. Uh, yes, Reach Out, I'll Be There, and uh, Baby, I Need Your Loving, and It's the Same Old Song, and Sugar Pie Honey Bunch, I Can't Help Myself. So yes, they do all the classics. And I can't remember how many of those are Four Tops originals, or how many of them were made more famous by other Motown artists before the Four Tops got a hold of them, but does it really matter? Honestly. Then we have another one. This was on the freebie shelf again, and uh, strange because, you know, the disc is in, it only has a couple little scratches on it. Yeah, a few, you know, enough scratches that I can kind of see why the store didn't uh, buy it from the person who was trying to sell it to them. But yes, Frampton Comes Alive. The Peter Frampton live album, and this is actually a remastered edition of it. Uh, so yeah, decent stuff. One of I believe it was the most success or the biggest selling live album of all time. And coming down to the, to the last four CDs. Yes, I will barely make it under an hour on this uh, video. Uh, Connie Francis, the 20th Century Masters Millennium Collection. Uh, can't help but like her. Um, Who's sorry now? Uh, Stupid Cupid and Lipstick on Your Collar are three of her big hits. Uh, she was one of the lesser um, pop songstresses of the 60s. Uh, but yeah, still wonderful, wonderful artists. I am still hearing noises. Okay, ignore the noises, get through the rest of this video. But yes, wonderful artists. Check out Connie Francis if you like 60s girl pop. Good stuff. And then, uh, speaking of 60s girl pop, this would be 60s girl R&B, Aretha. How can you not... In my opinion, you're not a serious music fan if you don't have any Aretha in your collection. Okay? Point blank. Sorry. You know, do, you say I'm wrong. You know, ar argue with me. What am I... That's that... Uh, there's a meme on the internet. I can't remember what... Is. Anyway. I'm making no sense, so I'll go on with video. Aretha Franklin's 30 Greatest Hits. This is a uh, remastered edition of 
the classic compilation that she had. Uh, yes, I mean, all of her great, great songs on here. Uh, Respect, of course, and uh, You Make Me Feel Like a Natural Woman, Chain of Fools, uh, Think, I Say a Little Prayer. I could go on, I could name the entire track list. Just fantastic stuff. And I have a more recent Aretha album that I found in the dollar section at House of Records, a duets album, Jewels in the Crown. And, and you can see the assemblage of names on the cover here. Whitney Houston, Mariah Carey, Fantasia, John Legend, Annie Lennox, Elton John, come on. How could I not buy this album for one dollar? A freaking dollar. So yes, every bit as spectacular as the uh, list of guest artists implies that it would be. And wrapping up this block of uh, my CD collection is the first of a few albums. It's, I, I kind of don't like it when these blocks um, break within an artist's discography, but hey, I'm trying to keep it uniform with 90 CDs per video. We have Michael Fronty and Spearhead, Everyone Deserves Music, and I could tell another story about this CD. Let's, let's face it, I could tell stories about a lot of my CDs, but maybe I'll save that for a story time video or an album diaries video. I keep forgetting I want to do more album diaries. But yes, uh, this is a, I'm not a huge fan of Michael Fronty and Spearhead, but I do have a few of their albums. And uh, the title track, Everyone Deserves Music, has a special place in my heart, uh, which I will talk about later uh, in the interest of not making this video any longer than it, act than it already is. So let me uh, take my set, uh, my rack, put it back over on the table to relieve my legs. But yes, that is uh, chapter seven of my Hold Darn CD collection. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please leave a like, a subscribe, comment down below on, again, any CDs that um, you didn't see in here. Uh, I might have some stuff on vinyl, keep in mind. Uh, but yeah, if there's anything that I don't have that you didn't see here that you think I should have, let me know about it. Uh, any of your favorite person, your personal favorite albums, talk about them in the comments below. Um, and otherwise, uh, please, uh, Subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet. Check out my past videos and check out my fellow youtubers and friends down in the links below A lot of great channels out there uh, So many great music related channels on YouTube that it's, it's tough to keep up with them all but uh, and uh, Yes, that's it for now. So uh, thank you for watching and remember life's too short to be a music snob